What's up Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy and the overall markets. I'm also gonna be talking about some very important news that's coming up for Tesla next week as we have deliveries coming out. But just know that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit a thousand bucks, you're guaranteed 15. And the offer ends very soon in just about three days from now. Anyways, now let's talk about the markets. So Tesla's doing a very, very good job at holding up. We got some bullish news, which helped this thing start to bounce and outperform the market, which is very, very awesome to see. On the four hour, Tesla's looking very, very nice, forming a nice accumulation with this breakout from the inverse head and shoulders. And we look more bullish. It looks like it has more upside potential coming and it's doing a great job at holding up approaching deliveries. So the question is, what will Tesla do from here? I do think Tesla looks more bullish, but there are some very important things to consider about that going into next week. So let's first talk about why Tesla ran today. So as a reminder, we had Dan Ives come out. He basically was talking about how him and the Wedbush team are basically saying that Tesla's going to most likely beat Wall Street's estimates of 460. 62,000 deliveries. He thinks that they could actually be doing 465 to 470,000, if not more than 470,000, depending on how Chinese demand ends up looking for the quarter. That's not bad whatsoever. So that's a very, very interesting piece of news. And I think that he is correct about that. A lot of this does depend on China. It's one of the biggest sectors for Tesla sales. So that's part of why Tesla ended up running. He also said he has a $300 price target and Tesla is going to beat on deliveries. Tesla really, really liked to hear that. Uh, there was also news that came out that Tesla's reducing interest rates for a longer period of time in China to help boost those sales. So Tesla's been doing that, keeping those low interest rates, which will once again help them in a lot of different ways. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about some charts involving Tesla sales, and I'll talk more about some data. So I can't go over all the data for Tesla yet, because you have to remember that deliveries are going to likely come out on, I believe it's Wednesday, October 2nd. And then I also don't have the power to go over everything because the data is not out yet, right? We still have a couple of days left in September, so we have to wait for that, for this to be a lot more like sufficient. So I do want to call out, however, that so far for the year, we've been a little bit weaker in Europe. European sales are a little bit slower. This is because of interest rates, you know, economic slowdowns and many different factors like that. European sales are going to be lagging most likely. So that's something that's worth mentioning. But there is a possibility, and this is what Dan Ives is kind of like pointing out, we could offset that if we get very, very strong sales in China. So China is going to be a very, very important sector. Uh, I can't wait to see what they announce. And we have some important things right here. So if you look at basically like Q3, uh, so far, there's a lot of interesting projections. We're doing a good job for 2024 at holding up and keeping up with sales from last year. If you look at the overall seasonality, so far we're doing a good job compared to the years. If you look at the last few months, the red has been really high up here. So this looks like a very, very nice quarter for Tesla in China. And then I also want to mention that if you look at the total sales for the year, right, 2024 is in the red, 2023 is in the orange. Notice that we started off a little bit weak for 2024. We were down here. We've been slowly keeping up. And now for the last couple of weeks, we've been really catching up. So we're looking for a nice amount of growth in sales for 2024 and also for Q3. That's going to be very pivotal. So very nice to see that for Tesla. Nice amount of growth. Hopefully this continues. China's looking pretty good right now. Uh, however, we're going to find out if that's really enough to offset the European slowdown. We also have a lot of sales in America. That's going to be another big factor. So for the broader markets, don't forget that for Monday, we have not really much data coming up. We have some manufacturing numbers, but then we have Jerome Powell, the big guy, giving a speech at 1.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On <coughs> excuse me, on Tuesday, we have the Jolt's Job Openings Report, not to mention the ISM manufacturing numbers coming out. So look for some volatility then when the jobs numbers come out. For Wednesday, we just have a bunch of Fed speakers, nothing too crazy. For Thursday, we have the ISM services data that's very important and then continuing jobs claims, followed by Friday's very important non-farm payrolls, unemployment payrolls, and basically we have the very important unemployment rate coming out. So right here, unemployment. Can't wait to see what this looks like. That's going to be a very big factor for the market. So lots of unemployment, employment data, services data, and lots of stuff like that, which Jerome Powell speech on Monday. Those are the big factors for the markets. We're also approaching earnings season. We're not officially there yet for the next quarter, but we're getting very close for this quarter. Uh, as we're coming to a conclusion, I just want to say that we have a couple of earnings like uh, Nike and Levi's, and we're going to be starting with the bank earnings very soon in the next couple of weeks before Tesla announces earnings as well. So lots of big dates are coming out. For the last thing is the market's still at greed. We're still holding up some key levels, but we're going to be watching to see if momentum slows down. 
I personally think that the market does have a risk of slowing down for a bit. It does not mean we're crashing just for a temporary move. We're seeing a lot of uh, calls that were being bought and puts being closed as we're now at extreme greed. And this is typically what happens when the market's at a top or getting very close to a temporary one, right? Just a temporary top. Not, I'm not saying like an all-time high top or like a top for the year or anything like that. I'm just talking about this temporarily. So what do I see for Tesla? We're forming a very, very nice cup and we have more upside potential. If Tesla's bearish, you want to see it basically lose 255 around that area and start dipping down towards 252. If that fails, this could be dumping all the way down to 244. If we're bullish, you want to see Tesla hold above 260. It's going to be a big test, and this will likely push for 265 and 270. In my opinion, I think the share price looks more bullish because we're holding support, and there's going to be a lot of hype associated with their deliveries. So we're going to see a lot of buyers stepping in. So I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla tries to fight for 260 next week and tries to break it for the 265 targets. I think we might be pushing higher, so Tesla's going to likely outperform the market just as we did today. However, for SPY, we're showing some weakness. We're barely holding our 20 EMA. Uh, this is basically at 570.7. If that fails us, we're looking for 568 and 565. If we hold this, we could consolidate between 571-ish to 573. My guts tells me that SPY may dip a little bit more, so please be very careful. It's showing a little bit of weakness. But we have to watch for confirmation if we lose our 20 EMA to start dipping. There is a risk of that looking at the charts. ES is looking kind of weak. We'll see if on Monday, if this continues to remain below its 20 EMA. It's so far starting to show signs it may lose this temporarily. 5793 could be where we are looking at our critical 20 EMA. If we don't reclaim that, we could continue to fall all the way down towards the 5750s. So be careful, there's a risk of downside. To be bullish, you wanna break past 5800, but so far I do see a risk of downside. For NVIDIA, we look a little bit more bearish. We have a head and shoulders like structure. We have 121 as resistance and 118 as support, followed by 116. There is a risk of this dipping lower, so please be open-minded for that. For Bitcoin, we're kind of consolidating in the middle, not really doing much, but there is a risk of it coming down to this imbalance towards 65,500. For NQ, we're dipping. If we don't reclaim 20,250, we're at risk of coming down to 20,000 flat. It's still looking kind of weak, so I see a risk of downside. Coin, not coin, uh, QQQ is looking a little bit more bearish. We are barely at 485. We need to see if that holds. If it does not hold, we're looking for 482 and 480. If it does hold, we could rebound, but I do see a risk of downside. For Apple, we're kind of in the middle. If we end up losing 226.96, we could be dipping to 225. If we hold this, we could attempt to rebound, so we'll see how it goes. For a few more tickers, we have the IWM. The IWM is kind of in the middle. If we hold 220, we could try to rebound for 222. And if we lose this, we're looking for 218. I think this could try to rebound for 222. For other factors, we have Coin. Coin is trying to break out past the 200 EMA. If that breaks, we're looking for 192, followed by this 200 area. For other factors, we have uh, basically Amazon. We're a little bit below our 188 resistance of this fail. So we're looking for a move all the way down towards 185. So there's a risk of downside if we don't hold above 188. Uh, if we do break it, we're looking for 191 again, but it looks a little bit more bearish to me. Meta looks a little bit more uh, in the middle. If we lose 564, we're looking for 562. If we bounce off that, we're looking for 570, but I do see a risk of downside. Microsoft looks a little bit more bearish. We're continuing to fall. If we don't reclaim 429, red risk of dipping down towards this wick to 426. For Google, we're showing a little bit of weakness for a double top, but we have to see how it reacts to 165. If we hold it, we could technically rebound for 167. If we don't, we're looking for 163.94 all over again. Anyways, that's a quick update on the markets for now. I will be going over a lot more details about different tickers on Sunday. And for my video tomorrow, I just want to talk about um, deliveries. I'm going to be talking more about Tesla in more details. So uh, with that being said, please have a good night, guys. Be on the lookout for my next two videos. There's one coming out for Saturday where I'm going to be breaking down what's happening with Tesla so far and deliveries. And then for Sunday, I'll be talking about all these tickers from NVIDIA, Palantir, and the list goes on for all the different tickers out there to give you guys another more meticulous update. Until then, I thank you all for listening. Please have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another update and peace out.